I've been obsessed my entire life with success and how to get to the next level. And because of that, I've created some extraordinary opportunities for myself that have granted me with phenomenal cosmic powers. Okay, maybe not so genie in the lamp type, but I know how to get people to cash in on some of their wishes and turn them into reality. So where do you go to get CEO level upgrade opportunities and a bunch of phenomenal cosmic powers for your life and your business? Well, you found the podcast in the rough. So let's dig in. This is the Zebulon Thomas Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Zebulon Thomas Podcast, episode 77. Listen, today we're doing the first ever video podcast. Uh, So if you're listening to this right now on the Apple Podcast, be sure to check it out on YouTube so you can see the whole thing. And for those of you guys who are watching this right now, welcome and thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have a special guest for you. Uh, This guy is incredible. I saw a video on Facebook of this guy talking to everyone and sharing his environment, the ocean, the backdrops, the sunlight, everything was amazing, his energy. And I wanted to listen more, the more he kept talking. And so that kind of got me thinking as I went through this whole entire video, which I'm gonna show a little bit of that during this episode today. But as I watched this video, I started thinking, I really wanna connect with this individual. I wanna bring him on the show. I wanna share him with you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Hopefully you have time to to take this all in in one take so you can really absorb the content that we're sharing with each other and we're sharing to you. And hopefully this will help you in your life, in your business, and just go out there and become more than what is currently going on in the world. Become more. And, uh, and, And your life deserves more if you show up. So Please take some time, check this out, drop a like, drop a comment, share this with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast for even more episodes. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our guest. His name is Trip Mayhew, and he's an incredible person, and he's been through a lot, and I want to share his story with you. So let's go to the interview. Welcome to the podcast and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're all about, man. Your energy is so amazing. And that's why when I saw you, you know, posting in some of the groups, I was like, this guy is awesome. You're on the beach and there's like a beautiful beach behind you. And I was like, oh man, I'm in the zone. So tell us a little bit about that. Is is that your first exposure to me? Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like literally I was scrolling through and I see, okay, I see this guy on the beach and your energy was just like, Hey guys, like I was cool. like, okay, the voice alone, I'm 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 listening, man. I'm I'm zoned in. And I got an up close view. Beautiful beach called Kahana. Look at that. What do you think? Love it, right? So this is an opportunity to maybe step into a new reality right here. So let me see if I can guide you guys. Let me see if I can go for a swim. I can. I can go for a swim if you guys want. Let me see if I can guide you guys into uh, something really cool. I want you guys to kind of take a seat. If you haven't taken a seat yet, go ahead, take a seat. And then that seat, I want you to kind of look down right in front of you. And I want you to imagine that you're sitting at the beach here with me. Cool. And then you're like, I love the whole direction. And I was like, I'm going to sit here and watch this whole thing. (laughs) I'm like, cancel everything. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of, some, some people say I sound like a 14 year old surfer, but, um, yeah, I mean, I guess for your audience, for those that don't know me, I've, I've been, um, man in and around the online networking world, the online marketing world, uh, for 15, almost going on 18 years. And uh, that journey was has been a trip. It, it's been a, a you know I've gone through a lot of iterations of. I remember I started this game. I'm telling you, I started this game when Facebook didn't exist, when YouTube didn't exist. Literally, we were, I think we were like sending out. Um, I don't know, it was like applications on paper and doing those old hotel meetings. But it, it, at any rate, so for those that don't know me, I mean, I, I live in Hawaii. Uh, I live in Maui. I've been on and off these islands for about 25 years. I was actually a Marine. And, yeah, I've uh, seen that. I saw that. I was like, wow, you have that in one of your profiles. I was like, tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, that was a long, long, long time ago back in the day. I was, 
you know, for this, it was one of those times when you, you know, you got kind of the smarts, you know, you kind of got something going on, but I I was 20 years old and I had no freaking clue what I wanted to do with my life. Everyone in my family was in the military. So I just figured after screwing up and drinking too much and hanging out in the same parties and doing the same thing every Tuesday, Wednesday night, I was like, you know what, maybe it's time for a change. And I joined the Marine Corps. Um, that is a story in and of itself, my man, but, uh, it, it was quite a journey. And I think the, the one takeaway I got was I really grew up as a man and I, I learned to take responsibility for myself. I learned to kind of like figure out that, you know, you got to be part of a team and you got to follow directions and you can't just be, you know, you can't just do your own thing. And, um, at the same time, I hated it. Yeah. So, so it gave you the discipline you, you needed at that time for later in life. Right. Would I, would you say that? Absolutely. I was, but it, at the same time, I realized the minute, what, here's what happens. So check this out. So like when you join the Marine Corps, the first thing that happens is you literally, they take you and they put you on these yellow footprints. And I don't know if anyone's ever watched any of these movies uh, about joining the Marine Corps, but, and, and you just start getting yelled at for, for straight 13 weeks and they reprogram you. They shave your head, they take away your clothes, they put on your clothes. You, t- you know, camouflage utilities and they, and they give you a job and they turn you into this Marine. Like when you join the army, you don't become an army. When you join the Navy, you don't become a Navy. When you join the Marine Corps, you become a Marine. It is a very distinct difference. However, as much as it helped in the, the, how, how much value I got at as far as turning me a man, I knew instantaneously the minute I landed on those footprints and was getting yelled at, I was like, oh no. I think I made a mistake. I don't want to do this. So for a guy like me with an A type personality with a, like kind of likes to control things, it was really good, but it was also it realized I realized this is not something I wanted to do. I wanted to control literally control my own destiny. I needed to live where I wanted to live, make however much I want to make, not have any glass ceilings, not be sent to war. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you have, you have zero control. So that is the the exact opposite of the person you are like that energy and love. And it's like, yeah, you're willing to, to, to do all these things to be, you know, to serve and, you know, do your contribution. But at the same time, you're like, there's gotta be another way. Right. Yeah. I looked at, I look back at it now and I think, you know, I got so much value out of it, at, at value out of it as a human and as a man. But I also learned exactly of what what I did not want is conformity, consistency, and like being a follower. And um, I got out of the Marine Corps. I had a kid. I was making six hundred sixty nine dollars a month. I got my degree while I was in the Marines. I was surfing. I was stationed in Kanye. I like this is back in the day. I was in Hawaii. I loved it. Um, and I was just trying to kind of find my way. And I ended up joining the corporate world for a better part of four or five years until 2001. And I'm not sure if you remember what happened, but most people, you know, September 11th happened and I was working for a startup in San Diego. And within what, literally about three hours, I had lost my job. Um, I had lost my income. I had a brand new condo that I was paying for mortgage on and I had no idea how I was going to feed my family. And a lot of people don't remember this, but the whole economy crashed. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was, it was a very strange time for those who weren't directly affected. And I remember, you know, I was, you know, I wasn't say I was too young, but I was young enough to, 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 to know that, you know, there's no planes in the sky right now. The economy's crazy. We don't know if we're at war. Is it in our backyard? What's going on? And, and, you know, I had friends signing up right there, you know, like, let's go. I had already been in the military. My time was done. I was in the corporate world and yet still as a civilian, I was like, now what? And that was a really, really pivotal moment for me. And I said, you know what? I've always kind of thought about wanting to do something on my own. I didn't even know what that meant. It, the definition of that now is called entrepreneurialism, but I didn't even really even know what that word was because when I grew up, it was what I call the 40, 40, 40 plan, right? So you, you're taught to get a good education and to live this American dream where you go to work 40 hours a week for one company for 40 years, and then you retire on on 40% of your income. Yeah. And that's what my grandfather did. That's what my dad did to a point. But that quickly, I realized 
does it doesn't exist that old american dream kind of like the 1950s movies it doesn't even exist mm -hmm. anymore it's like yeah. totally gone so i found out this word entrepreneurialism and uh check this out i took every penny i had in savings and i did the weirdest thing it's something i was just researching and looking at ways to make money on my own and i bought a pool route when you drive down the street now you're gonna see <laughs> pool trucks everywhere I had no idea that it was a business, but the minute I thought about it, I started seeing pool trucks everywhere and realized I was living in San Diego. There were pools everywhere. So I started this pool route and I was cleaning pools and I was maintaining the pools. Similar to what I did in the military, I was an aircraft mechanic. So it's the same thing. It's like whether it's water or hydraulic fluid, whether it's a pump on a helicopter or a pump for a pool, it's the same stuff, right? So I was like, so I started um, building this pool route and I actually built it to a six figure income working three days a week. I, I remodeled, here's my claim to fame. I remodeled Drew Brees' pool. Nice, nice. The quarterback, yeah, the quarterback for the Saints. I remodeled his pool in San Diego. So at, it, it was at that point, the, 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 the main thing that I got from that pool route business and that idea is um, freedom. So I was able to start coaching my son's baseball team. I was working three days a week, making more money than I was working as an engineer, commuting an hour a day. And I was like, I am never going back. And then I realized what, um, my degrees in mechanical engineering. I suck at mechanical <laughs> engineering, dude. I suck. Okay. I'm not a good mechanical engineer. Right. Um, sitting in a cube, designing things, heat sinks, heat transfer, wiring. I, I, I suck at it. What but I you know it, but your passion's probably not there. I just did what I thought my family wanted me to do, right? I was like, oh, I just go to school, get a job. So I was like, get a degree. I got a degree in engineering, pretty good math. You know, I'm like, okay, I was in the Marine Corps, mechanics. It's, it all kind of coincided. But then I realized I was really bad at it. And when I started the pool route, what I realized what I was really good at is just working with people. Like if people called me, I actually called them back. Yeah. What can I do for you? What's wrong with your pool? I fixed their pool. And next thing you know, this pool route grew and grew and grew and grew. And I ended up creating a franchise system for the pool route. And I sold it to a guy in Australia for almost a quarter million dollars in 2003. For how much? Uh, almost a quarter million dollars. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Just so starting out from just you know, learning about entrepreneurship and, and doing this and then thinking ahead of the game. It's one of the things where you're so passionate about doing that. And you're like, well, what else can I add to this? And, right. and I love that about what you did there. And I think more and more people are starting to figure this out, but you know, we've been like you and I, we both been doing this. And I want to kind of go back because you said a couple of things. You said something about finding, you know, that, you know, getting away from that traditional style of working. I remember working, I, I had 36 jobs um, before I was even 23, like that what? sounds crazy. Yeah, dude, it's insane. And we're not talking get like a pool good job. Bus boy, cook. <laughs> Am I right? Am I getting oh, right? Dude, yeah. Well, I, well, not the pool boy, but I was, uh, you know, I worked uh, at restaurants and, and bars yeah. and grills. I worked at in factories. I worked at retail stores. I was a manager, you know, oh. I worked at gas stations and it wasn't like, I started working at a very young age at 13. You know, I, uh, my dad's friend, you know, owned a machine shop and I used to spray paint these bulldozers. And then he was like, let me show you how to use the big crane. And there's like, I'm like, this is so cool. You know? And this guy was like really, really wealthy. So he was, you know, at 13, I was making uh 18, 95, 18 something an hour. That's killer. And so, yeah. And so, but then when I go, you know, I get my first real job, you know, they're like, here's $6, you know, it was six, six twenty five at the time. And I'm like, yeah, this sucks. And I used to always sit yeah. there thinking like, there's gotta be something else. And so I try to pursue other things. And then it wasn't until like I was around 22 and I got a jewelry job at a jewelry store being a gemologist, you know, I got, yeah, I studied and learned and I'm like, I'm in a suit and tie. I'm not getting dirty. I love this. This is great. And I'm selling, making some commission. And then I met, I met the DMS and I met the, the vice presidents and I'm like, man, you guys are not even work. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the, when the DMS and the vice president would walk into the jewelry stores, like everybody would, clean counters. I'm like, I just clean the counters, just clean the counter. I'm like, I'm not cleaning the counters twice. They're spotless. Like I just did this. I take pride in that. I make sure everything's uh, good. I just checked all the diamonds. And so then I was like, you guys don't even know how to play the game. So I was like, Hey, you know, I started talking to my CD. He had a little golf thing on his tie clip. And I was like, start talking about golf. And next thing you know, I'm golfing with him on Saturdays. Next thing you know, he's like, Hey, you know, don't worry about going to work tomorrow. We're going to golf with the buddies. You know, I'm like, and so then I, start, I started learning about 
and picking their brain. Uh, also having other, other mentors, which we, you and I both probably share the same mentor as far as Tony Robbins and other great right. people. Um, and so learning about that stuff. And that's when I started creating my own companies of business. And then um, you, you're probably familiar with Chet Holmes, right? The late Chet Holmes, I am. Right? I am familiar. So uh, w- I started working for his company right around the time he got sick. And I said, I was just watching all his stuff and, and learning uh, about him. And then I got in the company because I was like, I want to serve, you know? And so he would jump on the calls and I was, that's when I realized I'm like, wait a minute, I'm working for this company. I'm selling these huge things to you know, multimillionaires, billionaires. I'm learning about the system and we, you know, it's harsh, harsh sales, but you know, I had a great leader and he would jump on these calls and I realized I was getting CEO level upgrades right there on the spot where other people were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to talk with this guy. And here I am on a phone with a group of 10, 15, 20 people in this, and we're just back and forth. And so I learned cool. all my sales techniques from Chet Holmes. And I was like, from here, pff, sky's the limit. So it's like, I can relate to you. And when you're talking about advancing, it's all about adapting and, and bringing it back to you on the beach. It was like, when you came out, you know, there's something said about, and you know, individuals who, when they speak, like you listen, like there's people that just talk a lot, but like when you speak, you're one of those individuals that when you speak, it's like, I could be way over here on the beach. And if I heard you talk and I'd be like, what's going on over here? <laughs> like, like, I want to know what's going on because the energy is in your voice and that can't be fake. That's why I was like, got to yeah. reach out to you. This is exactly who I want to interview. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, cool, cool. So there's a, I just did a, I, I think I just did an Instagram and IGTV on the kind of the number one thing that's working on social media right now. Mm-hmm. And um, here's a little nugget for, for people listening. It's authenticity. Right. So, um, I came from the infomercial day, like, I, I, after the pool business, I, I started working online, started working network marketing, started doing coaching and consulting, started uh, doing coaching with Tony Robbins. I mean, run the gamut. Right. But yeah. that world, like I bought Tony Robbins, first tapes on a, a, an infomercial and it's a place where I, I, I came from, but that even that doesn't work anymore. Right. You don't need a suit and tie anymore. You don't need mm-hmm. Tony Robbins doesn't wear a suit and tie. Right. He no. wears jeans. Right. So what, what seems to be working is authenticity, people being real and then people being vulnerable. Yeah. And when, when, when you're able to capture that and just speak from the heart, more, I think more people listen. They, at least it's been my experience that more people will gravitate towards you and listen to you. You don't need the makeup. You don't even need to fix your hair. You don't need to be perfect. Everyone has faults and failures and they're not a perfect every day, but if you could just speak from the heart and speak authentically and then speak with knowledge, you know, yeah, and like yeah. you said that people, people tend to listen to me and I appreciate that. It's a great compliment. And I, I, I honor you and I thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. Um, I think that that comes from um, a couple places. One, obviously the authenticity and the vulnerability that I share, mm-hmm. but two, Man, I've kind of been around the block, right? Yeah. I mean, it shows. It shows. I, yeah, I'm 51. No way. See, now that now that just blew that this is that yeah. blew me away. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm 38, so I I imagine that you would be close to my age or maybe actually younger cuz you look great. Why not? Man. I'll go there. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude, dude, you look, look great. Yeah, no, thank you. So that 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 comes with wars, divorces, um, serving in the military, getting your degree on your own, being a single father, starting your own business, failing so many times, uh, working on personal development, you know, for 15 years, growing up and learning how to do YouTube and Facebook and social media and all these things. And then going through, um, some really, really significant challenges that's allowed, I think created, um, at at this point, I'm kind of like, I feel like I have something that I can share. There's probably not a position anyone has been in that I can't relate to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to kind of say this to the listeners too. Uh, You know, what he's talking about is like, he didn't sit on the couch and watch the world around him evolved. He went out there and he didn't wait for his right moment either. He didn't wait for the world to evolve for him to say, this is my moment. He went out there and lived life, challenged himself, got busted up on the rocks, slammed against stuff, fallen down several times, but it's because he kept getting back up, kept going forward. That is why not just success, but he's humble and also why he looks the way he looks because, you know, you look at someone who was at a job who they hated their entire life. You all know that individual and they have, 
like they're aged so poorly and they're slouched and they're always down and they're grumpy and they're angry and they're they're frustrated or they're just they have no energy in them no life yeah. left to them they've been sucked dry yeah. but he's lived his life doing the things that he wants to do saying i don't care if i fail it's about living in the process. It's not about the outcome. It's about the process. And because of that, he's arrived here at the tender young age of, would you say, 51, right? No, I thought it was 38. I, I 38. Back, I'll go backward, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll go at the tender young age of 25. <laughs> you totally could pass for like, you know, like way, way younger than that. I'm not even going to put Thank an age you. on it because it's where you're at in this time and space. You know what I mean? Well, that personal development is not just uh, my businesses, right? It, like I work on my body, I work on my mind and I work, you know, I, it's, it's a constant, like, uh, you know, a focus in all of the, all those areas. I, like I talked a little bit in, in one of those lives about biohacking. I'm not going to get into it today, but it's basically the, the, the accumulation of working on your mind, body and health and spirit and all. So that way you can create the best life because people um are struggling especially right with coronavirus and you know and everything that's going on and all the shutdown i'll share a story with you real quick um and it's you know when you talk about resiliency and and everything um everyone faces difficulties it, and everyone has a different story but at the same time they're you know you can never really judge so I'll, I'll i'll just share this with you i'm pausing because it's like so last year my son yeah. passed away oh sorry to hear that yeah and so um it was an eight-year battle with drug addiction um i had back surgery i got divorced all those three things and it it you know that could either define you or you can take from it and, you know, I mean, do you have faith that he's still around in some other space, maybe not earth? And if the answer is yes, then I can sleep, put my, lay my head at night. But um, I have faith that although my back was broken and I just had surgery, I have faith that, you know, the rest of my body is healthy. You know, I, you know, we we're so blessed. And if you can always come from a position of gratitude and um, you will always be able to, you know, create your own story that is, um, uplifting and you can move and have you know what does tony say there's the science of achievement i, I kind of have that down it's the art of fulfillment so despite all these challenges that everyone even your audience may face everyone has challenges that they go through it's you can really control everything through your mind and how you process things and then how you look at things and that that's been um this, the, that's been really the the one thing that has gotten me through and will get anybody through is if they can change their perspective or change their state, then, then life is limitless and the art of fulfillment will be there. So don't let the mind control you. And I know that that's something I've been trying to explain to a lot of my friends in these times now, and also to my audiences is, you know, this too shall pass. And, uh, and, and as much as it sounds crazy, there's some benefits that we've gained from this, that we've benefited from, you know, I know individuals who, you know, never had a break at their jobs that they, they didn't even know they hated it. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a certain type of people out there that they, um, they don't have conversations with themselves. I don't know exactly what they're called, but and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, they don't talk to themselves. You know, they, they go where they need to go. They do what they need to do. And, and in that downtime or while they're working, they're not having a million conversations in their head. They're just right. focused on the task. And so, you know, this one individual I know, you know, got laid off. And uh, after a couple of weeks, he started feeling a lot differently, a lot lifted. It's like, wow, I didn't know how much I really hated my job. And he never You're thought about it. Bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so he's like, I'm not going back. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? He's like, well, I'm not close to retirement. You know, he's in his thirties. He's like, but I'm, I'm not going back. Like I've been at this job since I was 20, I think 18 or something like that. And so I was like, well, what are you gonna do? He's like, I'm going to figure it out. You know? And, and now he's, you know, obviously I was wanted to jump in, but I didn't want to, you know, unsolicit stuff and say, Hey, you know, start your online business. Let's go. You know, cause that's where I'm thinking about. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll see where he's at. And if he needs me, I'm here for him. So uh, yeah. he ended up starting an online company and, uh, and he's starting to grow it right now. And he's, he's, he's making enough right now where he doesn't have to go back, you know? So, and it was that quick. He was making a shift. It doesn't take 10, 15 years to do this. You can do it right now. And the other thing I've noticed is that, you know, 
when this, when we all went into shutdown and stuff like this, we started paying attention to day to day tasks. We're not thinking about tomorrow or two weeks from now. We're thinking about what's, what's going on today. What, what are they saying today? What's going on? Oh, oh uh, you know, are we, you know, all these things. And so we've now recognized the present moment. Plus we spent more time with family. And so we're evolving and adapting as a, not just, you know, in America, but as, in the world, which I think this is a this was a good thing to a point. Now it's it's a bad thing to all the people who are suffering and have been affected directly right. by this. But at the same time, it all goes back to if you've made it through this so far, and if you've been affected but you've made it through, what are you going to do from here? Are you going to live the past and say this happened to me or this is what's going on? Are you going to move forward? And those of us who are not directly affected that want to go outside and just you know run, run rampant like normal, we're like, well, how can we participate? And, and be part of the bigger picture. And I see, I, I don't really choose a side. I just, I've always been the rule breaker. I've always been the person that says, if you're going this way, I'm this way. And, and I'm running my own trail and, and I don't need that. Cause I'm like adventurous, you know? Um, I just feel compatible. One day I was doing meditation. I thought about this. I'm like, everyone's fighting and arguing and complaining. And people are saying, even the people that are supporting, like we want to help and all that. I'm like, can you imagine if we just had, you know, a few solid leaders <laughs> tell us, hey, this is what's going on. And we all said, all right, guys, we got this. Like, let's stick together with my fellow neighbor. I love you to death, but, you know, stay over on your side. Just just hang down for a little bit longer. Let's have some fun. And we're going to get through this. We're going to eliminate this virus and we're going to be better. But we all work together. There's been no pep talk. There's been no, you got this, no pat on the back. It's been, this is what it is. And 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 it's just fear and, and um, craziness. And I feel like the media has destroyed it. So seeing individuals like you in groups, uh, and um, hopefully my followers see me the same way that us going out there and fighting against those things and going, don't pay attention to the media right now. Like, look at me right here. Look at me. Yeah. Like, let me guide you for just 10, 15, 20 minutes. I think that thing went on for, yeah. what'd you do an hour almost? I think when you were on the beach that day. Um, yeah. I think a half hour. Like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so more of us need to do that. Like capture the attention We're stop trying to be Instagram famous. Stop trying to be this and that, like pick a lane, do what you do the best you can lead yeah. the, the group, the community you have and, and love wholeheartedly. You know, well, one of the messages in that video is like, I, and again, it's clear we don't want to minimize, you know, the people that are suffering from the virus and having issues. There's, there's a lot of pain out there as a result of this. How, but uh, I talked about an equal and opposite reaction to things. And the reason I brought that video on the beach is because the, what the sad, well, I don't know if it's sad, but the reality is, is that the beach is healing. The ocean and the coral. And these are things that give life to literally, that, that create all of our, our air to breathe all this stuff in this, the, the ocean is cleaning up and it's magnificent, like the climate, the world, um, and this isn't a, you know, I'm not trying to make a statement about climate change. I'm just simply stating a fact. If we just shut the hell up and stop, there's no boats out there. I don't, I don't remember that. Video. There's no boats out there. Well, if there's no boats for a couple months and there's no swimmers and there's no toxins from humans and, and there's no plastics and single use plastics, like what you're seeing is I've taken a couple dives and in, down in, you know, into the reefs and the reefs are blossoming. Wow. And it's crazy to see this healing of the earth and how fast that's happened. Now, again, I don't want to minimize all the pain that people are suffering from, but there's always this equal and opposite reaction or this force that's driving. And in that I tend to look, want to look at the good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I feel like even myself, you know, I come from some dark places and, and I like, why is it so easy to be in the dark? Why not? Because it's, that's why I've been programmed. And so you, you want to shift and it can't, it can start out as a daily battle, but I feel like it's like a workout when you get up and you work out and you make that your routine. When I get up and the first thing I do, if I turn over and grab my phone, I'm going to see the news. So what do I do? I get up, my feet hit the floor. I give my gratitude. I go do my yoga, my meditation, whatever I want to do that day, whether I'm cleansing in the morning or I'm eating you know why it's breakfast. Good to listen to you. you know why it's good to sit in the dark? What's that? Because you don't have to look in the mirror. <laughs> because you don't see yourself. Yeah. And when there's light and you look in the mirror, you're like, oh shit, I gained 10 yeah. pounds or, oh shit, I drank too much last night. Or, the judgment. Oh, God, yeah. I'm depressed. And, and then, and then at that point you go right back to your, what you were saying, are you going to have a conversation with that person? That's you. Or are you just going to fold that up, put it away and go back to the rut? 
Right. But in right. darkness, you don't, you could just sit there and lay there, you know? Now, now, I feel like you could relate to this, I'm sure, because of hearing your story a little bit for the first time, you know, because uh, we haven't really had any communication until this particular yeah. interview. Um, it, one of the things that I've realized going through the trials and tribulations of my life, you know, um, you know, my, I won't go into my backstory, but my backstory, you know, has been kind of chaotic. And I can look at that and say, this is my life, or I can look at that and change. But I will say this, because I've been to the deepest, darkest places of my life, and I've also been to the extreme highs, I find myself right in the middle. And, and I know I'm humble about it because I know where I can go and where I can, you know, where I can thrive. So, you know, in a, in a place of fight or flight and, and protection and all that, I'm confident. I'm not worried. I don't have that fear. I've eliminated the fear because I know where I can go in a place of, of, you know, uncertainty with life or in finances or business. Like I've been there, I've been swallowed up. It's so it's like, once you've done through that, you're just like, well, I'm not really worried about that. And then the extreme highs are our lifters because we go, it might not be where we want it to be right now, but I know where I can go and I don't need any more examples because I've been there. So let's keep going. Right. You know, I mean, the past is, uh, you know, people living in the past are living in regret. Mm -hmm. People living in the future are living in worry. And then there's the present, which is fucking difficult to live in, right? And there's only a, there's a few specific techniques that work, and I don't care what anybody says. It, you know, it, they, whether they're depressed or they're addicted or whatever, if you can live in the present, there's a couple things, right? Mindfulness, gratefulness, yoga, meditation, and diet, nutrition. These are all biohacking techniques, but if – I, I, there's a lot of people that come up to me and they struggle with depression and I, and my answer is something they don't want to do. They're not willing. I, I, I said, I can cure your depression. And they're like, well, what do you mean you can cure your depression? I, I said, okay, here's what you got to do. One, whatever substance that's not serving you, whether that's tobacco or nicotine or opioids or um, uppers or whatever, or alcohol, you got to cut that out. Two, you need to detoxify your body. Uh, you need to um, improve your nutrition, whatever that case, you know, lie, I'm not going to get into a nutritional conversation right now. But three, this is the secret. I said, I've never met anybody that's done 60 days straight of yoga, 60 days straight, and have come out depressed. Never met anyone. But, so true. <laughs> but how fucking hard is that? It is. It is. Well, it's the same thing. I, I did... I started doing more meditation. I have a third degree black belt in, in Taekwondo and then get out. Yeah, I've been practicing I, since I was 13. Oh, well, I was started really young. So like, it's, it's one of those things kind of like when you're talking about, you know, going and serving, it was like, you found this discipline. I had this discipline from my, my masters, you know, and, uh, right. And so I learned and I love that, but you know, it wasn't like, I don't walk out of there knowing I have the skills and I'm a ninja, you know, like I, I know how to do some things. Of course, I'm not worried about that, but it's not about that. It was the discipline of life. It was about learning the balance, the yin and the yang. And, uh, and, and so, you know, all of that serves me to the point of, you know, you're talking about, you know, getting out of depression. So I started doing more meditation, uh, as an adult more than I was in my you know, my practice. And wow. so I was do, I started off with like a 10 day meditation, uh, doing it for 10 minutes. And then I got up to 45 days and then I did 75 days straight, but my meditations were an hour and 20 minutes of me in total, like Zen mode. Now, you know, it takes a lot to practice that, but That's it, hard. It, it, then again, it doesn't. You, some people are like, how do you have the time? Well, you have the time. You have a lot, you scroll through your, your feeds a lot and you waste a lot of time. You have the time. Yeah. Um, and, and it wasn't complete quietness either. I can tell you this, the first 10, 15 minutes of my meditations, you, you know, wait for it. There's a motorcycle cruising down the road somewhere. I hear it, or there's kids playing or geese or whatever. Uh, you start to block that out because it's not about blocking like all of that out, ignoring that it's about going inward and signing out who you are. So, and I want to bring this up because I want to talk about your I am movement. Um, sure. But one of the things before we get into the I am movement, I want to say this, that, um, some I learned with Chet Holmes and Robert Young. And when he was going through his, uh, his battle, uh, you know, he had this other guy, I don't know the name, but he had a guy come in and help him change his uh, vibrations through sound therapy and stuff like that to heal his body. Um, and what's so incredible about that is 
I was hearing, you know, you, you get little pieces of the puzzle throughout life, you know, so that was a time where it's being applied. But before that, like years before that, I started learning about vibrations of the body and our energies. And it's part of manifestation and stuff and whatever your belief systems are. But I know that the vibrations of our body, I look at what we're at now in, in the state of our world. And I feel like there's a lot of low vibrating energies right now. And that puts us at a very low state of consciousness. And we sure. need to elevate that and you, you know being a yogi and doing all this stuff you'll understand that like the vibrations are very very important and it's not about like i'm having a good day it's it's about really being grateful and being in sync with nature and your fellow humans you know and you, and everything. Do you feel a shift i do i do and I do. like in the last i don't know if it's been a year maybe two years maybe since the election i like i i'm not really sure what's going on with this world to be honest with you um but I feel this inch and I don't know what that shift or where that shift is going. I just feel a shift. Yeah, I you don't know where it's going or why. A little bit of an awakening, maybe. Uh, maybe that's positive thinking. I'm not sure. I think so. No, I think I think even if even if it wasn't, it wouldn't be a negative awakening. I, I think you're right. An awakening of people are waking up because you got you got the people that are are entrepreneurs, leaders, and yeah. you know they don't need someone to lead us. We just need someone to lead and, and things to make us thrive, right? right? And so that's like maybe the economy, uh, the economy and economics and, and the ability to expand, you know, social, social media and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you have the, the people that just want to be led that, you know, where do I buy my local groceries here? Okay, I'm going there, you know, and, or right. what, should I, what should I do today? We'll turn on the news, you know, and we'll tell you what show to watch, you know, and, and that's okay, those pre-programmers, you know, and so when you, when you mix that up, now you've given everybody a confused state. And they're like, wait, I'm supposed to be doing something though. I'm confused. And, and then people are giving answers and contradict, contradicting those answers in the same articles and the news. And so people right. are starting to wake up and they're like, well, what really? And now they're like, I have to think on my own to a point of, you know, cause we all become adults and we want to stay kids because as a kid, you have an <laughs> imagination. Someone tells us when to eat, what to do, when to play. And we right. just go do it as an adult. We're like, man, this sucks being an adult. But for those who just want to, be controlled a little bit more, but those who are breaking free are the ones that, you know, everyone said that's a little hellion right there. Right. But as an adult, we're like, we're owning companies, you know, we're doing what we do. So right. yeah, I, I would say there's an awakening and there's a shift. And, and for the, for the listeners, you know, practice gratitude, practice raising your vibrations. And, uh, and you know, it sounds crazy, but I mean, I did an interview years ago, years ago, 2007, right when the economy was about to crash the first time, you know, that in our lifetime, um, I was talking to my water, right? People are like, you talking to water? There's a guy talking to me about talking to your water, whether you believe it or not, you know, it's, it, it, I'm like, you can try it. You know, it's whatever you, it comes down to the faith, you know, talk about changing, like loving this water. They did science, scientific studies on this stuff, but you can change some electrical structures inside the water. And then when you drink it, now that's another thing that Chet Holmes was saying. Uh, he was saying this guy, he was, you know, on Karen bridge when he was ty typing this stuff and he was saying, he'd come on the videos and he'd be like, this guy's telling me to talk to my food. He's saying, I got to, <laughs> I got to say loving things to my food. And when I eat, it, it's going to make me feel better. It works, you know, but it's weird, you know, and he was saying that, but I, I get it. It's kind of what people do when they get together and they pray, you know, say grace everything before is, your meal. Everything sounds crazy yeah. right up until it doesn't. Right up <laughs> right. until you do it and it works. It's like, yeah. so you and I share this similar background, martial arts. Mm -hmm. I've been doing martial arts my entire life. And, um, it's given me the same sort of discipline or taught, you know, the wild kid kind of thing, but there's so much deeper that I've learned from Kung Fu, from Jiu Jitsu, from just the Kempo stuff that I've trained, but everything is sounds crazy right up until you figure out that it works. Right. And you're like, wow, that works. So yoga 10 years ago sounded absolutely crazy to me i'm like that's some that's some weird indian girl thing <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, then, it's weird yeah and then you then you realize like i somehow randomly went to a cop my back was hurting and i couldn't kick and i couldn't punch and i was like i just need to stretch and, and what started off as just a stretching thing turned into like literally the lifestyle and what started off as crazy yoga you realize, well, yoga is a martial art. Mm -hmm. it, yo yoga is a moving meditation. That's all it is. And, yeah. and 
everyone that says it's, you know, it's not that great. You know, I challenge them to come to my one, an hour and a half hot yoga class. Yeah, t- tell me it doesn't give you a workout either. Yeah. Right. Right. Like <laughs> you, <laughs> you're going to be yeah. sweating. You're going to be more sore doing that than any weights yeah. will give you. So everything is crazy right up till it's not. So it's talking to your water. It's crazy mm-hmm. right up until it's not. And you're yeah. like, and, and you know what? I believe like I, I tell people like I used to do life coaching, you know, before I made a shift, you know, because I, I was changing my life from a street kid to all this stuff. And I came out of that. And so I wanted to help people because I rewired my psychology, my brain. Right. So, you know, I have people in audiences stand up and one person would be an atheist. The other would be a Christian or a Mormon. And I'm like, listen, I support you. And whatever it is you believe in, as long as that belief makes your life amazing, but the moment that it doesn't make your life, not my life, your life good, that's when we got to fix it. We got to figure it out how to shift that. But if you, if you're going to be an atheist and that makes you get up every day, like, yes, I'm an atheist. And then dude, you're, I'm right there with you. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I have to change. It's so interesting that you reached out to me because it was a random reach out to say, Hey, you want to come on my yeah. podcast for your viewers? They might not know. We've never met. Right. And, um, but yet there's so much similarities that I've, I, that I have like th- with you. And I, when yeah, I, I connected it, with you, that that's why I was like, it wasn't one of those things I think about, like, would he be a good person on the show? It, how's his following or what does he do for a living? How much right. does he make? No, I saw you on that beach and I was like, I freaking love this guy. I'm like, yeah. I just want, I just want to, I just want to capture something, whether yeah. it's a podcast or something. But if I got one moment with you, I want to capture that moment for myself and then everyone else around me can benefit from it. Cause I feel like that's been the su- secret to my success is one, mm. not overthinking and just going, but also yeah. only focusing on what it is that I set out to do, like for the greater good. Like I, when I pick up my camera and I go film, right. I'm not thinking about how to make this the best video possible in this commercial. And is the client going to like it? I go, I know my skill set. I'm going to make this exciting. Let's do this. Mm. Like let's capture this energy. And so that's what I did with you is like, I just, I wonder if he'll, wonder if he'll respond. And I said, I said, you know what, if you don't respond, cause there's a lot of people that I've reached out to in the past that, that, you know, never, never responded. And I was like, I'm not, that's fine. You know, I just, I, maybe we just weren't meant to connect, but I'm like, if the right. universe wants us to connect, then we go. And you were like, boom, right. Now. I was like, dude. And then you sent me, you didn't just send me uh, messages. You sent me the voice message and I could hear your voice. I was like, that's awesome. Like, yeah. It's in my house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's interesting that we have a similar backgrounds, um, you yeah. know, in, in kind of the, maybe the, the pathway to get to, you know, where we, we are. And it really is just an internal focus on, um, thing like you were talking about, I, I, I've been to thousands of AA meetings in support of my friends, my mm-hmm. ex-wife and then my son. And people always ask me about, um, AA. And my response is always the same. It's, does it work for you? And that, you know, and if it works for you, then A is, is a miracle. And, and if you think it's a cult or you think it's some sort of thing and it doesn't work and you're, you know, then either, you know, that's your perspective and that's your, and it doesn't work for you, then don't do that. Maybe Buddhism worked for you or maybe, yes. maybe, maybe some, uh, you know, clinical biological, you know, reprogramming worked for you or maybe NLP worked for you. What so the answer is exactly what you said. In other words, whether it's Buddhism, Catholicism, Christianity, Pro- Protestant, Bat, what, whatever makes you fulfilled and happy and whatever propels you forward and provides you fulfillment, then it works. I'm not going to judge anybody based on whatever their beliefs are, are they good? They're, they're either a good person or a bad person and they're either happy or they're not. And if they are happy and a good person and they're this, they, right. they can't. And, this and I feel like we, we all have our days, you know, I, some people might look and I saw this, I saw this, I, I agree with this. Some people might look at me and be like, that guy's a jerk. Some people might look at me like, he is amazing. I'm all of those because it depends on when you <laughs> caught me, right? It's okay. I'm not perfect. I'm all of those. But where I'm at at my core is I'm doing good. Like even back when I was a street kid, I knew where I was around. I knew what I was surrounded by, but I saw every one of the people around me that were, you know, gangbangers and all this stuff. It's like, but yet they were, one guy was in a studio doing a love song. Right. And I'm like, yeah. dude, you know, these are great when we're hanging out, we're great people, but it's, it's the world around them. And I said, we all got to move up out of here now out of all the friends, 20, 20 some friends I had, I'm the only one still here. Right. I'm the only one without a record as well. Cause I didn't caught up in that, but they were all pushing me forward. You know, they said, 
you know, get up out of here. You know, like you can do this. I'm like, I'm, we're all going to do this, you know? And, and, you know, we all make our choices, but it, it comes down to, you know, who are you at your core? And if you don't like who you're at the core, then change it. But like you said, adapt to certain things. You know, if you're going to go into say Buddhism, you know, like then wholeheartedly go into it for, give yourself a, you know, a time period and say, I'm going to completely commit to this and see if this changes my life, but don't dabble. Right. I say with marketing and life, don't dabble. And, you know, even with the vibrations, you know, like me and you wouldn't have connected ever at this point if I hadn't and you hadn't changed your frequency at some point to keep moving forward. I, and, and, and these, this is how it attracts. Like I'd be people that are single and they're like in their late forties. I'm like, and they're like, I'm never going to find him. Like you're never going to find him because where are you looking for your ideal person at the bar? Is that way? How's your person look? Are they at the bar? Are they drinking? Are they doing stuff? Maybe if that's it, then you got to go to the bar. But no, it's most of them are like, I want a fit person that's loving and love nature. So I'm like, why are you at the park? You <laughs> know, why are you not playing tennis? Why are you now, not? Are you a fit list? person that's loving? You know, you're going to attract like kind, right? And you, yeah, you're going to you're going to vibrate at the same frequency. Yeah. yeah, become that person, and then that will come to you. It's always about focus. You have to focus on you because I feel that what happens here shapes your world. Now, there's a lot of gray area there, and I don't deal with gray area. I have to figure it all out. So when I say that, yes, there's some faith that has to happen there to say, well, why did this happen? Well, because there's a shift there. There's something that you need to learn. And I don't That's have the biggest answers. challenge. Yeah. That has been my yeah. biggest challenge is having a little bit of faith, not necessarily in myself. I, I don't lack for any confidence, but it's like faith in kind of the universe, faith in, faith in knowing that Sebastian may be in a better spot and that I'll see him again. Faith in knowing that if I continue to practice my katas or my forms, that it's going to provide me with some sort of uh, some something. It's going to teach me something. Faith that if I just close my eyes and try and be nothing, that that there's good that's going to come from that it that it's it it for me faith takes practice i have to continuously work on having faith and go am i being faithful to am i you know am i having faith in the system am i having faith in the society and like for with all let's say corona i have faith i have faith that you know the one thing that's constant is change right and that's the only thing in the world that's constant and so it, everything is going to change for the better Yes. Everything always gets better in some way. It's just an ebb and a flow and wherever we're at in some, we're either in an ebb or a flow. I don't even know what those mean. I'm just telling you. I love it. I love it. Yes. yes. And, and whether in an ebb, we're going to be in a flow. And if we're in a flow, we're going to yeah. be in an ebb. But you well, know. it's like the law of polarity. What comes up must come down. And my friend used to tell me this all the time. And I'm like, well, where am I? He's, you know, and I would know when I'm down. It's like, you're down. You're going to go back up. Don't worry about it. He's like, well, when you yeah. come back, it's going to be stronger. It's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the cycle and, and it's so good. So, so tell me about the I am movement. I want to, I want to talk about that. And cause that, that's yeah. exciting. And you have a bunch of other stuff on your Instagram, uh, link tree, uh, links. Which uh, is yeah, exciting. for sure. So, um, you know, it's probably the most, the strongest mantra, right? Um, it's, it's the greatest part to any sentence, you know, I am powerful. I am free. I am resourceful. I am human. I am fallible. I am vulnerable. I am authentic. Like it, it, it's a mantra that if you repeat to yourself and use positive affirmations that you're going to get, uh, whatever it is that you're thinking about, you know? So it's like, kind of like that guy, let's talk about that guy that says, you know, I'm never going to, I'm never, I am never going to find the woman that I'm looking for. And the answer is, dude, you're right. Because that's what you believe. So if, and then you went back to, well, if you work on yourself and you do all these things, well, what if you just shifted that one word? I am, you, what if you just took never and removed it? I am going to find the woman. So what the I am movement really is, is my background is entrepreneurialism and I teach entrepreneurialism, whether that's coaching or training, whether it's e-commerce or how to build a business, um, uh, you know, how to grow your network marketing company, how to grow your direct sales company, how to build your own personal brand. Um, the, it, I am stands for infinite abundance because there's infinite abundance in this world and in, in, in the entire universe, there's infinite abundance in belief. There's infinite abundance of money. There's infinite abundance of health and wealth. And I know everyone, there's iterations of all that, but that's basically what it stands for. And what it is, it's a, a community that we just launched actually. And it's a, it's a membership community where people can get um, coaching from myself and my team 
and they can also get support in whatever endeavor that, that, that they're looking for, specifically to entrepreneurialism. So they might have a network marketing company. They want to know how to grow it. How do I duplicate? They want to know how to build an email list. They want to know how to build their membership site. They want to know how to do video editing. They want to know how to use Splice and create a video story. They want to know... Uh, this by joining this membership, there's two things that they're going to get. They're going to get access to a support network that may be able to answer their questions. Not always just me, right? I, I'm, I'm bringing together people like yourself or like me that can come together, be part of this infant uh, I am movement where they might ask a question, how does my logo look? And they're going to get 50 responses. Um, how do I build, how do I best build an email list? Well, you know, We'll do training on that. How do I grow my social media account? If that's what they want to do, I'll show you how to, you know, they're, they're going to get a support group within the infinite abundance group uh, movement. So, so everything's we, all right there in one place. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a support group. And it's like yeah, one it. step in the journey of, let's say they do want to build a membership and teach yoga online. Well, I have, I have a team of experts that can help them build a membership site, whether that's with Kartra or ClickFunnels or I'm not, you know, all the, all the tools and software that's out there to do that. Or maybe they have, uh, maybe they want to build a, um, a, a video story sequence and maybe you, they, I can connect them with you, um, and your, your film team or whatever to do whatever. Uh, there's a lot of, so, the, and those are the, the that it's just sort of this support group. That's step one. Step two is that we really want to create, to create infinite abundance. We believe in aligning the body, the mind, and the spirit. So we, we also incorporate this spiritual and this physical embodiment within the network. Now I don't tell anyone to eat keto. I don't tell anyone to go vegan. I don't, I, there's no judgment and there's no absolutes. I think everybody's different. But there's some core things that you can do, right? There's some hydration, um, mineralization, meditation. Well, so we'll share these ideas that's eventually going to help elevate their vibration, which can elevate their business. They're, they're correlated, right? So that's kind of what the infinite abundance movement is. The other thing that I've done is I've done something that a lot of um, communities don't do and coaches don't do, and that's I'm sharing in the wealth or I'm sharing in the, in the growth of the community by basically building a simple affiliate program. Now, for those of your viewers that might not know what an affiliate program is, it's basically you can refer other people to the community and then we'll reward you with a little commission check because we want the, the best way to, to make money in my experience, in my past has been referral marketing. And that's never been more true than right now um, as Retail is going away as box stores are going away. Everything is being reached. And then not only that, but reviews and referrals, you know, if you're not going to buy a product, if, if there, if it has a one star rating out of 10, right. You're, it's just like, oh, you instantly go away. So having the community be able to promote the community and get rewarded for it is a really, really cool, unique way to grow our community. That's, that's kind of what we're, that's the whole essence of the infinite abundance movement is to propel and uplift everybody in their journey specifically to entrepreneurialism, but also with these little caveats of like hacking their body, their mind and spirit. I love it. I love it. Now, if someone wants to follow you, uh, give us the links and I'll link them below as well. So, yeah, I don't, I don't actually have any link. I mean, you can probably send them out trip Mayhew, T R I P P M E H E W. Right. And they can follow me on Instagram. That's, that's where I connect most the best. Uh, we have a Facebook group that we, we have, and then we have, if they go to infinite abundance movement.com um, or I can actually, well, why don't we get together after this and I'll share with you a link that you can promote to them specifically and get them a discount. Dude, thank you again for this interview and, and let's My connect pleasure. more. We're definitely going to connect more. So My pleasure, man. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and uh, stay with me so you don't miss any of my content. And if you want to go a little bit further and take your business to another level and grow as a videographer, a content creator, or entrepreneur, then check out ZT Films Academy.